I brought Eric down for his vehicle registration inspection, but despite having all the paperwork ready, they wouldn't pass it without seeing it running. And as you saw, I didn't really get time to connect up everything. So I'm going to have to do that now and get them running. But before I do, I need to get them able to stop. So I'm going to fit an old handbrake cable in the back. I noticed when I was down here earlier for the uh, the handbrake cable that the fuel tank isn't connected up and actually there would have been a cascade of petrol if uh, anyone had poured uh, fuel down that, that filler neck it's supposed to go in there. So I'll have to lower the tank a little bit because there's another one loose that goes in on top and that would be a little bit awkward to do um, with it so tight to the body. So my filler neck fitted up and the two breather pipes and while I'm here I'm going to do this fuel sender wire. The input side is good now. We just need to run a line up the engine bay. Okay, so now I can get fuel up into the engine bay. Um, I've done that just a bit temporarily because um, depending on which carburetor I get it running on, I may need to run a return pipe as well. So we'll just see what way we get things running. I'll need to keep the car relatively quiet. So although later I'm going to fit a competition exhaust, I've cleaned up this old uh, road car one and uh, used a bit of that <coughs> high temperature paint. And I'm absolutely amazed how well it came up. I'm after realising that the back box that I prepared for Eric is actually meant for my camper van and that I had uh, borrowed the um, exhaust from that system and fitted it to Moby. Um, I'm in the process of preparing for quite an interesting pro uh, exhaust project on the camper and for that I sourced this um, exhaust section from Mix Garage and it's from uh, Fiat Scudo which I'm going to try and fit on my Talbot Express um, because this downpipe section looks uh, particularly right for it but the silencer doesn't but this silencer looks perfect for the space that's available on Moby so that's going to go onto Moby um, this one is going to be cleaned up now and fitted onto Eric and I'll have this one on the camper got that? okay now I have the right silencer cleaned up for this system That's the last bit of under the body stuff for now. If I'm going to get this car running, I'm going to have to keep it cool. So I'm going to have to fit a cooling system. This is the radiator that I got for 
Jean at that time and said, I'm stripping that car down, ready for paint. So, gives me the chance to borrow a few bits like this. An odd thing there is that the, um, the spot welded on bracket for the, the header tank is missing from there and a, a slot that it goes into. So I'd say this has had a fairly unconventional um, engine installation at some time in the past. Clutch cable on. Definitely something missing here. That should be fourth. So let's pull it back into third. forward into fourth. And then join the two. Looks like fourth. Okay, now I can hold the car stationary and select neutral. The next thing is to uh, be able to get it running. So I need a throttle cable in order to do that. The one that came with it is the wrong type of uh, connection for the um, carburetor that's on the car. But luckily the one that came with Moby's Varijet, which I replaced, um, is the right type. Or at least close to it, so we'll try and fit that now. bit of a stretch for the cable but if it, I'm sticking with this carburetor I'll set up something a bit more permanent. That's great. Though. I'll start into wiring the engine bay now and I'll just start with the really obvious stuff and uh, that'll help narrow things down as it gets more complicated to lesser options. The left hand drive loom that I got seems to have been fairly modified for different applications and is not exactly matching up um, with Moby, which I'm using as a reference. So I have a fair bit of uh, cutting and splicing to do. I don't have that many uh, bits and pieces for setting up the, the Bosch system. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I have a whole set of pretty new parts that I keep as spares for Moby uh, when we're doing our long trips. So I'm going to fit those spares um, because they're proven on here so uh, that should get us a spark um, early in proceedings. So I think I have all the, um, the vital wiring connected up and all the uh, you know, vacuum pipes and different things that need uh, blanking and stuff like that. Um, so I should be able to connect up these pets fuel pipes now. Just going to try it out with the, the battery that I got for uh, Chewy. It's not a great fit but um, it'll allow us to see signs of life hopefully. First moment of truth, let's see if there's a battery light. An oil light. I forgot to make a connection from the loom here, this used to be inside that plug into the coil. Okay, let's see. Ah, ah battery light. Awesome. The oil light's gone off as well.
Just put a bit in, see if there's any leaks. I better put some water in as well. If it starts and runs, we'll put coolant in. I wasn't getting anywhere with that fuel pump, so I changed it and primed up this one. I appreciate that that's not running very well. But the fact is that engine was just thrown in at the last minute with the deal for the shell and uh, it was described as a non-runner so uh, if it runs well enough to get the car registered uh, I'll be absolutely delighted and it's even if it's not great it's uh, it's just cool to see um, uh, Eric come back to life. Um, I'll let it cool down now and uh, I'm going to check the uh, the fluids and then we'll see if this th thing can uh, move to demonstrate uh, uh, driving forwards and back. I've topped up Eric's oil and coolant. It's going to be really exciting to see uh, this car move for the first time in 10 years and perhaps the first time ever in Ireland.